How do you do? My name's Graham Murphy and I'm product manager here at Tech Rentals. Today we're just going to have a quick look at this L-Spec G4500 unit. Okay, for this power analyzer we supply in the packet, firstly we've got a, a GPS system so we can do picosecond time synchronization between units. Uh, flexible current CTs up to 3000 amps. Uh, we've got a power supply for those, all the voltage cables etc. Cal certificate software on a USB stick and uh, manual. Laptop with mouse, power supply and ethernet cable. Okay, and finally the instrument itself. This is where we connect up our, uh, in this case, the um, uh, flexible current CTs and voltage connections, power for the, to power the unit and all our data communication stuff here over this side. Okay, I've wired the GPS and we've put it outside, so now I just simply plug that in. It's outside, it needs clear air. Now, this is the comms port we use when we're connecting directly to our laptop. So I plug this in here and I'll connect the other end to the comms port on the laptop, which I've powered up. Okay, here's the power connector, so I'm gonna connect power. I'm not gonna turn it on yet. We're doing a single phase measurement in this case, so I'm going to connect between neutral and the uh, L1 and the other ends of these, of course, I'll plug into my uh, measurement system. Now we need to connect the clamps up. Now the clamps are wired as a set of three. In this case, I'm going to wire um, L1 because as I say, single phase. So I simply plug that in and um, screw this thing in place. I'll need another hand for in a second to do that. And also we should provide power to this because um, uh, the battery in this only lasts a short period of time. So there is a separate power supply to power this. Okay, <coughs> I've connected the flexible clamp up here. So I'm measuring the current. I've set the range to 100 millivolts per amp range, a 30 amp range, because we're not going to draw too much current out of this single phase. We can go up to 3000 amp range if we need to and I've connected it up, I have got voltage connections. So the, this, this is ready to run as far from a connection point of view. I'm also going to turn the instrument on. Okay, the instrument has two on switches. There's one on the back and now there's one on the front. So I'm going to switch it on from here. Okay, I've booted the PC. First thing we do, there's this little application called LSpec Search. We double click and we run that. Now the PC has been connected for a while it finds it. Now this takes, this doesn't happen instantly. Sometimes you've got to wait a little while for this to happen. Next thing we do is now click on this web connection here. And that boots up a web page straight from the instrument. The password is 12345, 12345, enter. Now I've logged in. Now it initially comes up with a, a summary here with a frequency current the current and the voltage we're doing single phase and the fact that we've got uh, time synchronization from the GPS as well okay uh, we need to now configure the instrument now under configuration here uh, device setup we'll just check that the GPS modules all running happily I'll click on that link and it comes up and it downloads it's got a positional fix so the GPS is working fine Okay, uh, next thing we need to, under configuration, we come bring up device info. This is this way we can actually, um, de device info here, sorry. Um, and uh, we can check um, uh, the, whether the AC power is on, etc. We can now change our site name over here. We've got current default as tech rentals. We can set it to anything. Next configuration we need to look at is uh, check the time. In this case, you might need to set a, um, I'll just click on that. All right, it's, um, we may need to set, uh, we're on UTC plus 10 at the moment. Okay, uh, and so we don't need to set anything else. We've got the GPS um, is the timing sync. One after this, uh, voltage and frequency. Okay, uh, next thing we check is under configuration here. We're just walking out, working our way down the list. We're going to go voltage and frequency and make sure the nominal voltages are correct. Here they are, um, etc. I've got uh, 230 volts for the RMS, etc. We 
Okay, um, we've got a, on the voltage frequency thing here, we've got a, we can set whether we've got three wire, uh, delta, four, uh, Y, four Y single. In this case, we're doing a single with LN. Um, so, oops, that was my accident. I hit that, and I'm just gonna alter that. Now, you notice this changes color. We can apply those changes um, if we're doing potential transformers, etc. cetera. Uh, in this case, we're not doing those. So we're okay there. Next thing under configuration, we've got to check we've got the right current clamps. Right, now, current clamp we've set, um, we've got a set. Now, we, this was um, the setting on the uh, thing. If it was the three settings, it'll either be 0 0.1, 0 0.01, or 0 0.001. The lowest one is 0.1, and that's 100 millivolts per amp. So, 100 millivolts per amp, which is correct. Um, and otherwise, we'd need to set that, those, of course, for the three. Okay. Now we go configuration. Last thing we need to set up is we need to check up out whether there's any old data there. So I'm just going to go um, PQ, um, PQ zip. Okay. Um, now we've we've come to this uh, the PK zip recording screen. If you need to erase the data, this is where you would erase it. Now the state we're in an enabled state, so now the instrument is actually recording. Okay, now we need to run up the um, software that, so we can actually look at the return data. So it's this PQS uh, SCADA Sapphire software. Now it runs up. Now you need to firstly come across the system here and tell it which particular machine you're using. So we come over here. Uh, I right click on that. Now I'm going to add a machine. So that is a component. Now we use the black box portable G4 is the particular machine. And we've got to now pick up its IP address um, and it will look around and we'll pick it up in a second. There's, that's the one where we're using there, Tech Rentals, okay. And we no, don't need to set any of the other stuff. Yes, um, I'm gonna call it, instead of, I'm gonna call it TR1, go finish. Okay, now we close this. Now we've got to tell it what sort of investigation we're going to do. Now, I'm going to start a new investigation. Investigation one on a component. Now we've added the component. So it's TR1. We could have multiple instruments connected to it, of course. Now we're going to be going, uh, time is all time. Now we go next. And uh, we're just going to do some trends. I click on that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'll just simply um, do the RMS values, um, the average, I'll do a voltage, and I'm going to do an average RMS value. Uh, and then I'm going to do a, uh, a current, and I do an average current. Now I click finish. Now you can put any, lots of different graphs in here and lots of things you need to do. I click finish. Now there's our data. Um, it's very easy. This instrument will store information years, a whole year's worth of information. You can change what you need to graph. You can decide all sorts of things. Um, so it's a very, very powerful system. In fact, one could say ridiculously powerful. This is the LSPEC G4500 available from Tech Rentals. Thank you.